Okay, so before we dive into the doing of this class, let's talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it. The first thing you gotta do before you tan yourself some fur is of course, get the fur off of the animal. Lots more information about that in some of the other classes. And then the membraning, and that is also something that uh, has already been done on these hides and it's gonna be different than membraning a buckskin. Removing the membrane from the hide does a couple different things. One is it gets all of the flesh and fat off of it so that it's not going to go rancid on it. And then also it's gonna squeegee some moisture out and it's gonna get it more prepared to be dried or frozen. And then that membrane is gonna be a problem when we go to tan the hide because it's gonna stop the dressing from getting in there. So what is this dressing stuff I'm talking about? So the whole idea of brain tanning hides is that we are conditioning the hides to stay more in the state they were in when they were the skin of a living animal, which means stretchy and strong and giving with your body when you move, which is one of the beautiful things about brain tanning as opposed to commercial tanned chromium hides or bark tanned hides. In a living animal, the skin is composed of all of these long protein fibers that aren't attached, they're in a loose matrix, and they're sliding back and forth, lubricated by this watery matrix that living skin is swimming in. With brain tanning, or in this case, egg yolk tanning, but same process, so smoke tanning technically, um, we, are, we are replacing the moisture lubricant in the hide with an oily lubricant. So as the hide dries out, all of those liquids that it was floating in when it was alive, they become tacky and they act like glues. So what we want to do is lubricate the fibers so they continue to slide past one another even when they are dry and not let the glues that are in that matrix glue the fibers down together, making them stiff and unwieldy. So after we membrane the hide, then we're going to be putting a dressing in from the flesh side. And the dressing is fats that are emulsified in water. Brains are the classic type of fat used for this style of tanning because they naturally emulsify into water and they're very, very fatty. Egg yolks are a little bit less fatty, but they are another substance that has natural emulsifiers so they can go into water and not separate out like other oils would. Another thing you could do is use a very lightweight oil with a bit of soap because soap, of course, has the property of breaking up oils into smaller particles and making them dissolvable in water. That's why we use them to wash our clothes and wash our dishes and that kind of thing. We're going to be using a combination of egg yolks, oil, soap, and water for dressing our rabbit hides. But you could do it with just brains and water. You could do it with just oil and soap and water, or you could do it with all of those things. So then we're going to really spend some time dressing the hide well. So making sure that we get all of those fibers coated with those oils. This is the tricky part in fur tanning because unless they've been stored frozen, which is great, most furs are going to have been stored dry, which means those glues have activated and glued the fibers down. So in order for us to get our dressing all the way through the core of the dermis of the hide, we need to have them unglued so there's space between them for our dressing to pass between. That is the trick in these hides, getting them open without tearing them because the hides are very vulnerable and fragile when the fibers are glued together. They can't give and stretch and move in response to force as the skin of a living animal does. So once we feel like we have that hide really thoroughly dressed, we're gonna be able to tell that a couple different ways. The hide is going to be really loose and sloppy. It's going to stretch really evenly every direction. And as it dries, it's not going to be wanting to instantly set up into hard and papery again. So once we're at that stage, usually it's gonna take at least three rounds of dressing it and then working it and then letting it dry out a little bit and then dressing it again. Then we're going to do the final softening stage where we work it all the way from totally wet and sloppy to totally dry. It's important that we keep those fibers constantly moving past each other as it goes from wet to dry because if they stay in contact as they dry in any one place, then they can get glued back together by those glues. So constant movement, 
So once it's totally dry, then the final stage is smoking the hide because those glues are still in there. And even though it's totally dry and soft and stretchy and feels like wonderful leather, if it was to get wet again before smoking, it would turn back into rawhide. What the smoke does is it denatures the glues in the hide so they can't stick those fibers back together. It also makes some cross bridging between the fibers, which helps hold a little bit more space between them. So those are the stages of tanning furs, the same as the stages for grain tanning buckskin, except of course that we're not scraping the grain off in furs, we wanna keep that. But because we're keeping it, it makes it harder to get these hides dressed because the buckskin with the grain removed is very, very absorbent and slurps up water like a sponge. The grain resists moisture coming through. So it means we're only able to get our dressing through from the flush side and we're rubbing it in as opposed to soaking the whole absorbent hide in a bucket of dressing as we do for buckskin. So similar process, but subtly different because we haven't scraped it. And then we're also more limited in the ways we can work the hide with the fur because some of the ways that we work buckskin would push the hair off of our furs. So that is the lovely process we will be walking you through today. And uh, yeah, just so you know, it is more challenging than you might think. And it's very common for beginners to tear their hides a bit or have them end up a little bit crunchy. And again, this is a, this is a beginner class and a jumping off place and learning the subtleties and you will get better and better as it, at it as you go on in your fur tanning career. So luscious soft fur awaits you. Hooray.